Hello everyone, I'm Michael Schneider, Senior Editor of Variety. Paul Shear is here. Welcome. I'm Hello, very sir. excited to be here. So, on this uh, show yes. that, that we've created, we ask you three things. Your guilty pleasure, mm -hmm. the dark horse, the mm -hmm. one that people don't know about, that you want them to watch, and then of course, the showmate, the yes. show that you can't live without. First off, we're talking guilty pleasure. Okay, so Stairway to Stardom is kind of like American Idol if American Idol took place in a dude from New Jersey's basement. Yeah. It was kind of this magical show. People would show off their talents, whether it was like playing like an instrument, singing, dancing, like, but not dancing like solo ballroom dancing. Like they didn't even have to have a partner. Doing comedy, ventriloquism. It was kind of this amazing moment in time to capture people just being very earnest in what they're doing, like crying on command, doing monologues. It is a show be that is so wonderful to watch because everyone is doing their best. You would never see any of this on TV. It is a stairway to stardom, and most of these people are still on that stairway, and that is totally fine. Like, But I think that there's something about the purity of it. There's no one making fun of it, there's no one judging it, there's no one kicking anybody off. It's more just celebrating people just from the neighborhood coming down to this carpeted basement and just, uh, you know, just standing in a corner. The other thing I love about it is, you know, 80s, like they were just getting that equipment for the first time, oh, and, yeah. and you have the public access folks who are playing with wipes and like all sorts of the new technology Technology and having some fun with the effects. We need more weird in TV, and yeah. Stairway to Stardom is weird. We've gotten too glossy, our reality shows are too mean. Let's go back to when we would have like Circus of the NBC Stars or whatever, where you just, you know, you'd watch like John Redder on a trapeze. I want more of that. Of course. That's why these attacks are mysterious. They're not conventional attacks. This show is mind-blowing because it is about a horror author, like kind of like a Clive Barker, a very self-important egotist who thinks whatever he writes is amazing. And he had made this show in the 80s. It was a horror show that kind of played with like 80s tropes, whether it was like bad hospital drama, it was terrible special effects, like you're talking about the wipes, yeah. terrible dubbing. Matthew Berry, who you know from shows like Snuffbox and The Mighty Boosh, two other great BBC shows, is completely dubbed in the entire show. It's amazing. It's not really sketch, and it's not really like a fully real show. It's kind of in this middle ground where it's like parroting genre and also commenting on a lot of different things in pop culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, Legends of Tomorrow, do you ever watch that? Oh, yeah, right. I yeah. mean, again, that's a show like, how do you top something you that's so absurd you and just so crazy? You can't get there. And it's like kind of when we did Burning Love. You know, Burning Love, people are like, oh my gosh, it's so much like The Bachelor, but it's, you know, it's it's so much funnier than The Bachelor. It's like, and The Bachelor is like, oh, we should just do Burning Love. Right. And, and like, The Bachelor is now funnier than any episode it's, of Burning Love. You're absolutely right. How do you parody that yeah, when you can't it, go higher? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's the best comedy on TV. Yeah. You working out? A little bit. Would it be imposing to ask you if you would do the show? When Larry Sanders came on, it was just like perfect storm of like everything before it, where it was like, oh, here's a show that's shot on film and video. So it had this like this look that was unlike anything on TV. And it showed you this backstage look at how TV was made, but it was incredibly dramatic. And it was the precursor to everything that we love. I mean, I think you can see elements of, you know, Curb in there. I think yeah, you can see definitely. Fleabag, like the same mix of comedy and drama, and the performances you get are amazing. The celebrities on the show playing themselves are just mind-blowing. When you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you've got all these people. Yeah. It's really a special show, and it holds up really well, and I'm so happy Gary Shandling finally let all the episodes be seen, because for a long time, he made a DVD box set of just the episodes he thought were worthy to be on a DVD box mm. set, and now they finally put them all out. So you can kind of see the entire run of the show. See, this show oddly is like my sex life, in that it lasts about an hour, there's a pause, and I'm usually interrupted by Hank. Black Monday returns March yes. 15 on Showtime, so definitely check that out. Very Paul, soon. always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. It was Absolutely. A blast.